if you go back 10 years, we just had a cow-calf operation, and sometimes we had cattle in the feedlot even, fed them corn, fatten them. Um, since Eli came back from college, we've been trying to add more enterprises to, uh, as they call it, stacked uh, systems. And so the first thing we added was some sheep. And uh, you don't want to add a new enterprise too quickly because there's a real learning curve to uh, something you've never done before. And we'd never had sheep. And uh, we've learned a lot about how to handle them. And we're, we've got 55 ewes now, and we're probably going to get up to a couple hundred in the next five years. And then the newest thing we added in was some hogs, and that was a year ago. We'd like to turn those piggies out in a cornfield and, and let them eat the corn and, and graze corn so that they wouldn't be in a feedlot either. So about eight, ten years ago is when we, when we thought we should be we'd doing these rotational grazing and splitting up pastures and such. We, we really wanted to get cattle integrated into our cropland, putting more into the, into the soil so the soil will give back to us even more. Our goal is to get to the point where we're not feeding any stored feeds over the winter time. And last year we got, I think probably we fed for 50 days. Um, and last year was a tough winter. Um, we had some snowfall early and then it melted off and we thought that was great, except that made a layer of ice. And then we got some more and it melted and we got an even thicker layer of ice. And so there, there are some tricks that you can use in this part of the country to be able to keep your cattle out there for a longer and longer time. So we had about 250 acres of, of cover crop and I would say uh, half of it we windrowed. We, we, had, we hired a, a guy to come out with his self-propelled disc vine and he windrowed it. And, uh, we wish we'd have done all of it like that. After the first frost, he came out and did that, and it was actually it turned out to be right before it, the first snow too. We found that the quality kept in that row, and the cows were able to find it through the snow. Up to a certain point, we actually had to go out there with a, a loader tractor and show them where it was at one point. But once they found it, they went right up the row. Yeah. Um, but this year, we're, we're doing that again, uh, but we'd like to, to bale some of it up and, and leave the bales out there, because then they'd be able to get to everything. You know, they, you know, the bale grazing is what they call it. So you give them however many bales they need per day, and, uh, and they should be able to get to everything. Even with the, the corn stalks, we, we want to try to see if we can maybe go out there with our, our V-rake, get a windrow that we can bale up and it'll just be what they want to eat and, and leave bales out like that because we didn't get anything out of our corn stalks last year because yeah. it was all iced over. My grandpa started farming down here in, in Castlewood area. I'd like to keep it going as long as I can. It's getting tough and so you need to be able to do something new, something uh, original. Every year that we try something new and it works, it's like, all right, we got it all figured out. And then I go to a winter conference and somebody tells me something new and it's like, I think we got to try that. 